Hi, Brad Curry here from Be Active Toys. Uh, a couple weeks ago, I had a customer uh, ask me about some of the parts that I make for the uh, original GI Joe Jeep. Uh, so today, I thought I'd make a quick video to just kind of show you some of the uh, different parts that actually go onto uh, this particular Jeep. Now. Hasbro originally uh, released this in 1965 and it was in production for multiple years all the way up into the uh, uh, early to mid 70s with the Adventure Team um, and there have been several different um, variations on some of the parts. Now I've been a, a G.I. Joe collector for uh, 30 years. I started making the uh, reproduction parts for this Jeep about six or seven years ago. Uh, I been a collector for well over 20 years at that point and I did not realize until I started to make reproduction parts just how many parts uh, there were to these Jeeps and how many parts were actually missing on all of the ones that were out there. There are a ton of these Jeeps out there, especially the uh, original 1960s, uh, what we call the five star Jeep or the Jeep 7000. Um, and then of course it went on into the Adventure Team and you can get the Adventure Team Jeep again in the green combat Jeep or the Desert Tan. So, so I'm going to kind of rearrange a little bit here. So I just, of course, this was the box on the original one. Uh, the Adventure Team came and had several different types of boxes that the, the Jeep came in, whether you were buying just the Jeep itself or whether it was sold in one of the actual Adventure Team sets um, that came with it. So, so there are several different ways that you may have purchased that, and I will talk about some of the differences. Uh, of course, here is my five-star Jeep. I wanted to have this all together, um, but I couldn't find the searchlight and the tripod uh, for the back here too, so which it would have originally came with as well. So that happens, but uh, so there was a tripod and a searchlight too. So. At the moment, I couldn't uh, find it, but I wanted to make sure that we made this video real quick, just as a reference for you to know about all the parts that go into this Jeep. So I'm gonna start right now just talking about the original five-star Jeep. Um, there were several parts that kind of went to this that I started reproducing uh, right away. Uh, of course, the main one was the windshield, and these are always frequently missing that windshield. So I have, uh, so one of the very first ones that we started to do was the actual windshield. And it's actually changed a little bit from uh, the way I originally designed it and, and put it through. But um, I don't sell the windshield with the plexiglass, uh, predominantly because I always kind of felt that uh, a collector could just go to your local hardware store and kind of buy a piece of uh, acrylic or plexiglass cut. But I do have the uh, cutout where you can uh, take that out and fit into it if you do want the glass in it. So that was the first one. We also started to make a lot of the smaller parts that kind of go into it. So I'm gonna take this around. I haven't really done too much uh, in terms of parts for the actual cannon. Uh, it, this one still fires, it's pretty cool. Uh, or the tripod itself. Uh, there's a lot of sophisticated um, geometry with the tripod, but, uh, and those are also frequently missing. Uh, but once we got through with the windshield, uh, there are a lot of just small parts that kind of come out uh, and are missing frequently on these Well, as well. Either they've been broken uh, or they're just not there. Um, and in some cases, as the Jeep evolved over time, Hasbro stopped including some of those features and parts on the Jeep too. So, so one part that uh, a lot of people always need, and this has been done several times too, is the actual um, uh, steering wheel and the steering column. So uh, we've got our steering wheel and steering column that we do, and of course I've done that in uh, the original black color, or you can uh, buy this in uh, the olive green as well. So there's the rifle rest. So right here, uh, the original was also had what they call the rifle wrist. Um, and it sat back here, went right in, was glued into there, and of course you could uh, put your rifle on. There were these guardrails here now. You can see that this is one of the original uh, ones that came. A lot of times these are warped or frayed and the plastic becomes brittle, so that sometimes breaks as well. But there's a two 
holes that go into there. Uh, we started to uh, reproduce them too, so I, uh, you can replace those uh, with that as well. Uh, some of the other parts here in the front of the Jeep, you got your gas cap. Sometimes that's missing. So I have a, a reproduction of that, and that's pretty simple. If yours is missing this, all you need to do is super glue that on. So kind of uh, going around. So I'm gonna come back here to the way the actual trailer was attached to the Jeep. So we've got our hitch pins and the hitch pin chains, which releases your Jeep. This, of course, is the way that kind of comes in. Uh, so we've got this. I'm going to take this off and kind of move this over here for right now just to get it out of the way. So you can kind of see uh, we also manufacture the hinge pins and you can get that in a couple of different colors of plastic and whether I put the chain on it or not. Um, and frequently to the actual tailgate is missing as well. So. So I've also got a, a tailgate that has been reproduced so that you can do that. And we sell the replacement hinge pins here too so that you can also mount these in there and, and have your hinge pins uh, for the tailgate to help hold that in place as well. Now, you'll notice on the back of the tailgate, I wanna point this out because this is kind of a feature. Uh, honestly, I never really realized or paid too much attention to this feature here. Um, on the tailgate. It is a part of it, uh, but that was there because you could mount the actual spare tire. So you could either have the spare tire on the back or you could mount it over here on this side as well, like it is in this Jeep here. Now, I also have that part because I got requested for uh, this piece to be a part of it as well. So. Um, so this is another part that would basically get glued on over here so that you could use that to uh, mount this your tire on. A lot of people ask me about the uh, nut and bolt to hold that. That's just an 8 32nd screw that goes in there and there's a square uh, nut on the inside. If you come around here, I'll show you. Um, this comes out of my reproduction piece and a uh, 8 32nd uh, square nut goes into there to help hold that in when you glue that on then your uh, screw will go in there too coming right on down here often other parts that are missing is the shovel holder and your shovel rest so so we've got that here too and again you just glue these on as a replacement if you have the old broken one on there a little uh, hobby saw helps to saw that off and then uh, there are holes on these sometimes uh, it's useful to use the hole. Sometimes you might want to just go ahead and saw those off and just super glue that on as well. And we also have the bushing, what's the flag bushing. So, and I do the flag bushing in a variety of different colors for you to do as well. So that's kind of some of the basic parts here uh, that are frequently missing. You also frequently are missing the uh, knob for the rev up Jeep. So, um, this is one of the other features here. If I just open this up for a second, you can see uh, this particular Jeep doesn't have the rev up motor anymore, but there were battery plates and there's rev up motor. Uh, there's a frequently reproduced molded part um, that was plastic clanger that would go and hit this. Uh, that would cause that sound to uh, get revved up too. So you've also got that if you've got a functioning motor on yours. So. Uh, oftentimes these are missing these uh, headlamps. I have not reproduced the headlamps yet. I'm still kind of waiting for uh, technology on 3D printed materials to come up so it, you can print clear. It's getting there, we're almost there. So they'll also, at some point in the future, I imagine that we will be able to print clear headlights as a replacement for these as well. And the other thing that I reproduce is the front bumper. So you can see here, and now I do the front bumper a couple of different ways where I actually have the star embossed and the HQ26 embossed on it. Of course, originally it didn't come that way. It was just blank like this, and then they use stickers and um, to kind of go on that. So you can get that in either of those styles, depending on what you like. Um, I've even customized those for customers in the past too. Let's move right on down into the trailer. So uh, again, there was another tripod that went into the trailer that held the searchlight. Um, 
and the searchlight's pretty common. The tripods uh, are often found broke, so you do need two tripods to complete it. Uh, this front of the trailer, you've got a couple of uh, chains here uh, that go and hook into the back of the trailer. And again, this is just an eye bolt uh, here with a couple of square nuts to hold that in. And then of course you got your trailer stand. Now, I also reproduce that part too, if you need that. So that's an easy fix to kind of replace and that just gets held in by a, a screw or a pin uh, that you can kind of make that into a, and use it with that as well. The other feature that is often busted on these is the uh, rear tail lights, the tail, trailer tail lights. So, so I also have these where they will uh, be able to kind of glue on with that. And uh, one of the nice things you can customize this, I do have the red part uh, here that you can kind of get the red insert. Or one of the nice things sometimes, not that you would necessarily put white on your brake lights, uh, but I do and have had customers that have replaced that insert with either white lights or orange or, or red and use those in different uh, applications for customization as well. Of course, the last thing, uh, one of the other things that this came with were the uh, missiles for your um, big gun here and it shot these out. So I also reproduced those in a variety of different colors as well. Uh, and it shoots fine so long as your mechanism and your spring is still good. You do want to watch and be careful. Uh, it, I mean, we're dealing with 50, 60 year old plastic, so it's always possible that that could break if you're really uh, actively using it so, as well. So, so this is the five star Jeep and some of the uh, differences here. I'm gonna uh, set up again, come back and I will have the Adventure Team Desert Tan Jeep and we'll mention a couple of the different variations that went on during the Adventure Team Air and some of the differences with color palettes uh, on these Jeeps as well. All right, now I want to talk just a little bit about uh, color variations that have occurred in the Jeeps um, over time. Some of the uh, things that we do when I'm trying to reproduce some of the parts uh, and just make you aware of kind of what goes on on these reproduction parts as well as some of the different uh, variations that have occurred on this Jeep over time too. So first off, as we take a look at this, um, you can kind of come up here and uh, as we pan in, you can see some of the different color variations. Now, uh, these Jeeps were produced widely uh, over a 10 year span and most of them are 50, 60 plus years old. Uh, it is very hard to get an exact color uh, with modern day plastics that are used for 3D printing to match the colors exactly of these Jeeps. Especially considering that most of these Jeeps got a lot of wear and tear. They were well played with, well loved toys. A lot of times there's fading, the original color is not actually there, or they've been sitting out on a flea market vendor's table for years, uh, soaking up sun in the, in the summertime, and there's sun fading, or there's just uh, different types of heat staining, or just leaching the colors that plastics have and, uh, due to age as well. So, so the only way you can really guarantee exact color match on some of this stuff would be to mix up uh, and match the paint and paint the parts, which most most uh, plastics that are used in 3D printing uh, can easily be painted as well, and often are. So, so just keep that in mind as you're buying toys. Um, we try to get as close of a match as possible, but we can't always get a perfect match. And you can see uh, just some of the differences in the colors of green, um, so here with the colors of tan here. Now this particular Adventure Team Jeep that I own uh, is uh, actually a little bit different of a color from the normal tan, but you can kind of see here uh, how it doesn't quite match up 100%. Um, and again, some people are okay with that. Some people, the only way you would really uh, be able to do that would be to uh, uh, mix up a paint and try to exact match that color. Now I want to talk just a little bit about some of the variations that occurred over time. So here on Hasbro's, uh, on the original Jeep, you can kind of take a look again with that uh, gear shifter. 
for the uh, rev up Jeep. You can see how that was made out of metal, had a little plastic uh, cap insert on top of it. So, and of course, by the time we got into the seventies with the adventure team air, uh, that had been replaced by an all plastic uh, molded part here. So and we do have uh, that that we uh, include into uh, and make as well. So, so you have those particular types of uh, changes. One other change, so, uh, that also occurred with uh, this. If you recall, on the original, there was the uh, wheel hub over here that got mounted, uh, where you could also then put the uh, tire on that. That was pretty common in the Rat Patrol, or what's the Desert Patrol Jeep, that a lot of times is called the Rat Patrol Jeep, even though Hasbro didn't have the uh, Rat Patrol license, but it is a Desert Jeep that had that. By the time the 70s came around with the Adventure Team Jeep, that had been removed. But you'll do see the other stuff, the other part that was not on his, was this no longer had the actual um, hook, shovel hook here. So they still kept this part to it, but they no longer included the shovel hook there as well. So a couple of the changes that had occurred. Uh, on the back tailgate, there's a couple of different tailgate hinges. So originally, with the original, when we're taking a look here, so you can kind of zoom in. Let me get these hinge pins uh, off of here. And you can take a look at the way this hinge pin, or the uh, here was, it's kind of just a hole uh, that that goes into. By the 70s with the Adventure Team Jeep, they had changed up this uh, and now instead, uh, they kind of took it where it's kind of hollowed out, more like a D-shape as opposed to a pinhole. So this is more of a D-shape type of um, tailgate pin uh, system. So, and you had a little bit more movement on there too as well. So, so just a couple of the different changes in style uh, that happened over time uh, with the uh, Adventure Team Jeep as they as Hasbro Stein kind of started to do cost uh, at that point too remember those plastic uh, clear headlights that were in here uh, by the Adventure Team those have just been replaced with stickers uh, on this particular one it, those stickers have long dried off and kind of fallen off so those are coming some of the differences that have occurred in time with the Jeeps as far as the uh, G.I. Joe and the original Jeeps go, um, I'm happy to share today some of the parts that we produce to help you get your Jeep kind of back up into a, a working order and have it uh, like it was when it was original uh, to you. Um, most importantly, just have fun and enjoy the hobby and enjoy collecting G.I. Joe. So thank you for paying attention and uh, uh, giving us your time today. I hope you found this video useful and full of information that you can use in your collecting world.